toilet paper. It's not just for bathrooms anymore. Wow, this is beautiful. Thank you. But Uncle Buck, what's the theme of my party? The theme? Oh, well... Hey, uh, there's no toilet paper up here! Take this to Miles. But it's my birthday. Do you want him to bunny hop down here and get it? Good point. Oh, and Maisie, your party theme is recycling. Um, doesn't one usually TP the outside of a house? I'm saving that for your birthday party. I'll be out of town. Tia, forgive me for being your legal guardian and all, but where the heck do you think you're going? To the boys' swim team tryouts. Do you really think you can make the boys' swim team? Without even getting wet. Hang on there, Flipper. The only buns you're going to be squeezing today are going to have weenies in them. Now go check the hot dogs and taste the chili. This is so unfair. Hey, you know me. Dumb and unfair. <laughs> Shoot, too much jalapeno in the chili. Quick, dial 911. I got this bum covered. That's no bum. That's a scheming low-life hustler who's wanted in 10 states. 11. Now that Hawaii's joined the union. <laughs> Pete, you old slime ball. Buck, you young slime ball. <laughs> Give me a tape. <laughs> I like it. Living life to his own kind of rhythm. It's Uncle Buck. Who's going crazy taking everybody with him? It's Uncle Buck. He was born to be loud, like a screaming wriggly crowd. He's the one the neighbors call you up complaining about. Who's flying house style and a whole lot of luck? It's Uncle Buck. Pete, I can't believe they finally caught up with you. Uh, it was that stinking unsolved mystery show. <laughs> God, I hate reality programming. So what was life like in prison? Prison? Oh, it was one of those minimum security joints. Actually, I'm going to miss the golf, the tennis, the dancing lessons. Dancing lessons in prison? Hey, it's the one place where the Lombarda is still happening. <laughs> so, Pete, where are you staying? I'm glad you asked. I need a favor. I'm looking for a place to hang my hat for a day or so until I can sniff out my next, uh, you know, uh, business opportunity. There's a guest room upstairs, if you don't mind a room without bars. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Grandma will think having a jailbird right here under our roof is a wonderful idea. Why, does she Lombarda? <laughs> Look, Pete, here's the problem. Say no more, Buck. Say no more. All those years I took you under my wing, that real education I gave you while you were cutting school, all that seems like a dream to me now, so forget it. Pete, you're taking this the wrong way. No, 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 no. When the boy I thought of as a son slams the door in my face, I guess I should say, thank you. <laughs> I'm not saying you can't stay. I'm saying you're going to have to make yourself scarce until after the party. If the old lady finds out you're... Mrs. Ogaboom, you're early. This isn't early, Buck. This is prompt. Try it sometime. Who's the broad? And what is everybody standing around for? We have a birthday party to set up. Hey, Bub. If you're the clown, I'd be slipping into my slap shoes. He's not the clown. This He's... is Buck's old friend Pete. He's going to be staying here for a few days. Oh, he is, is he? Actually, Pete is just, well, he's... He's a stockbroker who's got business in Chicago. A stockbroker, huh? Well, maybe you'd like to look over my portfolio. Looks damn fine from here. <laughs> <laughs> 
I better get this wrapped before Maisie sees it. Are you any good with your hands? I once made a gun out of a bar of soap. <laughs> Pardon me? Come on, let's give her a whirl. You know you look so familiar. Have I seen you somewhere? Do you watch reality programming? <laughs> Tia, I don't know how to thank you for covering for me like that. I do. <laughs> okay, you can go to the swim team deal. And go out with one of the guys afterwards. Fine. Maybe two of the guys. No, no way. No problem. I just tell Grandma she's wrapping her giraffe with the Birdman of Alcatraz. <laughs> Don't forget your nose plug. <laughs> Good decision. <laughs> Uncle Buck, can I chop water balloons on the girls during the party? Uh, no, son. Somebody might get hurt. But are you a cop? No, I'm not. I'm the magician. <laughs> My party is Saturday. I expect you there doing magic. But I'm, I'm sorry, dear, but I'm just in town till my business deal closes. My old man's loaded. Darlene, Pete... How loaded? Darlene, should you be running along home? My mom says the longer I'm out of the house today, the better shot she has at getting through tomorrow. Come on, Darlene. Oh, to home. I'm going upstairs and working my egg trick. Time out. <coughs> Here, you can practice with mine. Mind if I wash it first? <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that. <laughs> oh, Pete, it's been a delight meeting you. The delight has been all mine, Mrs. Hogeboom. I told you. It's Margaret. As you wish. Margaret. And, Buck, I must admit, you did a nice job on the party. Well, thanks. I... But what really stuns me is how a doofus like you could have a friend as interesting as Pete. Good luck on your stock deal. Hey, if it doesn't go through, what are they going to do? Throw me in jail? <laughs> I can't believe we pulled that off. You're dealing with the master here. Tia, I didn't expect you home so early. The heck you didn't. Pardon me? You knew if you gave me permission to go out with the swim team, I wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> so you didn't go out with the team? Sure I did, but I didn't enjoy it. You got a nice touch with that one. Yeah. I think I may be onto something with this permission thing. <laughs> Can you believe it? My car won't start. No problem. I'll call a mechanic. No, you won't. Why make Margaret pay some grease monkey Sunday double time rates when she can have it taken care of first thing in the morning? Oh, Pete, I like the way you think. Thank you. Buck, this is a businessman who knows the value of a dollar. Okay, okay. I'll drop you off at a hotel. <laughs> there you go again. Throwing Margaret's money away in some hotel when you got a nice guest room upstairs. But you'll be staying up there, Pete. I couldn't possibly put oh, you Oh, I'll up. double up in Buck's room. There you go. Problem solved. No, it's not. Well, why not? You might find out that I snore. <laughs> if you start, I'll strangle you in your sleep. Pete, I really like the way you think. But Mrs. Hogaboom... Buck, Pete has come up with a sensible solution for saving me money. So stop whining. Yeah, Buck, stop whining. <laughs> I'll just go and get some things out of my car. All right. What the heck are you doing? I'd be in a businessman who knows the value of a dollar. You're not a businessman. You're an ex-con. And if that lady finds out, I'm an ex-uncle. Buck, I'd made a career out of people not finding out who I am. So relax, will you? Okay, but stay on your toes. Like a ballerina. <laughs> you don't really snore, do you? Tell you the truth, I don't know. You know, when you think about it, that is so sad. <laughs> peaches, get some peaches in there for the kitties. <laughs> oh. All right. Good morning, Uncle Buck. We're starved. Yeah, what's for breakfast? Uncle 
Buck's famous Don't You Wish You Got Up When I Called You, because this is all you have time for breakfast. Please! Please. Bottoms up. Come on, hustle. Let's go. says in some countries it's considered a compliment. Find out where and go there. The only place you two are going is to the bus stop. Now hit it. Maybe I ought to try some of this stuff. Nah. <laughs> Call the cops. There's a greasy tow truck in the middle of our driveway. It's the mechanic working on your grandmother's car. Ooh. Is he cute? Tia, first of all, he's way too old for you. Second, he... Actually, he's adorable. You have my full permission to go out there and throw yourself at him. All right. You really hate me, don't you? I know I'm onto something with this permission thing. Top of the morning to you, Bucky, my boy. So, Pete, what's the verdict? Do I snore or not? Well, uh, that's hard to say. Come on, you can tell me. Well, uh, actually, I can't. Why? Good morning, Peter. Again. <laughs> Good morning again yourself, Maggie. Maggie? Excuse me, you know what that girl just told me I could do with my grease gun? You gonna do it? I don't think it's possible. <laughs> Well, anyway, the car out there is all set to go. Oh, thank you, young man. Turns out all she needed was a jump. <laughs> well, much as I hate to, I better be on my way. What a great idea. You've got my check, right? Right next to my pacemaker. Check? What check? Not that it's any business of yours. But Pete has graciously let me in on his stock deal so that I can double my money, too. Mrs. Hogaboom, I can't let you do this. Buck, it is my $5,000. This does not concern you. It sure as hell doesn't. But there's something you should know about Pete. Like what? Yeah, Buck. Like what? <laughs> he's... he's old! <laughs> you call it old. I call it experienced. See you soon. You can count on that. I know. Come on, Pete. You're not going to keep her check, right? Oh, of course not. I'm going to the bank and cash it before the old bat wises up. Hey! with her check, you don't know me. And if you think I'm going to give it back, you don't know me. Pete, you just can't take her money like this. Why are you acting so surprised? You know who I am. You know what I am. Look, if your pal Maggie gets ripped off by some ex-con I let into the house, my time here is over. So, you don't belong here any more than I do. You ought to hit the road with me. Go trolling for suckers instead of staying here and being one. No. What has happened to you? Whatever happened to the kid that Used to ditch class and come to my place over the drugstore, remember? I taught you three-card Monty, how to handicap the ponies, scam the record clubs. Look, I always knew you hustled for a living. But I guess I never thought of your suckers as real people who got hurt. Does Maggie look hurt to you? I probably never told you this. But you used to be my hero. You didn't have to tell me. I sensed it. <laughs> Wait a minute. What do you mean, used to be? I thought you were the neatest guy in the old neighborhood. Well, naturally I was. <laughs> hey, let's get back to that used to be thing. I guess I saw you through the eyes of a kid back then. Now that I'm a man, I can see you're just a heartless old creep. Oh, Bucky, she'll get over it. Well, how about me, huh? How about me? Here. I'm going to break my rule. Here, take the damn thing. I always hated when your lip quivered like that. 
Thanks, Pete. Take care of yourself, lad. You too. Uh, any idea what I'm gonna tell Mrs. Hogaboom why you just disappeared? You didn't forget all the blarney I taught you, did you now? <laughs> <laughs> Nice car. Well, at least I got her checked back. Pete! Well, I guess I'd like to speak to someone at your bank at whatever department stops checks. Ah, oh, the check stopping department. That makes a lot of sense. Sure, I'll hold. God, I hate Barry Manilow. <laughs> yes, I'd like to stop payment on a check. My account number? Well, see, it's not actually my account. Technically, the actual account holder is Margaret Hogaboom. That's H-O-G-O -O boom. <laughs> uh, well, see, the reason she's not calling herself to stop the check is she doesn't want to. <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> yes. He came back, Pete, I love you. All right, you came back just like Richard Gere and an officer and a gentleman. Pete, I love you. I love you. I... Where's Pete? Pete? Pete who? Oh, come on, Buck. Where is he? Mrs. Hogaboom, I might as well tell you and let the chips fall where they may. Well, hold on to your chips. Because I was on the way home, and I suddenly figured the whole thing out. I was afraid of that. Well, so was I at first. But then it hit me. This could be wonderful. Are we talking about the same thing here? I'm talking about Pete and me spending the rest of our lives together. You're going to marry him? Oh, hell no. We're just going to shack up. <laughs> Mrs. Hogaboom, I can't let you do this. Buck, please. If it weren't for you, I never would have met Pete. And I will never, ever, ever forget this. Never say never. Buck, are you feeling all right? Me? Yeah, I'm fine. But it's Pete. What's Pete? He's dead. Oh, I don't believe it. I'm having a little trouble adjusting to it myself. <laughs> Did I say he's dead? I meant I'm dead. <laughs> uh, Buck, Maggie and I need a word alone. What's the matter? 5,000 wasn't enough? Listen... I'm not too old to put you across my knee. Yes, I am. <laughs> you just get the hell out of here and leave us alone? Why would that idiot tell me that you were dead? Well, uh, probably to be kind. Because when you hear what I'm about to say, you're going to wish he was right. <laughs> Why would I wish that? I'm not Peter Riley, stockbroker. I'm Pete O'Hallahan, flimflam man. Yeah, you know, con artist, hustler, ex-convict, scum of the earth. Stop me when you get the picture. I don't understand. Well, uh, I guess you could say I'm uh, Robin Hood with a wacky twist. I take from the rich and give to me. But mind you now, I try to show folks a good time. And I generally leave them happier than when I found them. So you just came back to see how deliriously happy I was? I came back because I don't want Buck to lose those kids on account of me. What? Maggie, he's great with those kids. Oh, I know he's rough and he's crude, but he's crazy about them. Anybody can see he belongs here. Even a heartless old creep like me. And that was the only reason that you came back? No. Also, to give you this. Yep, I cashed your check. I got as far as the state line and realized I couldn't go through with it. Well, thank you. I guess this settles us up. I guess so. Pete, you know what hurts worse than almost losing this money? 
It's knowing that you think that I'm just a gullible old fool who was ripe for the picking. No, Maggie, no, I don't think that. Oh, God, no. I think you're the most enchanting, charming, sexy bard I ever met. And that's why, for the first time in my miserable life, I broke my rule and never given a mark their money back. Well, I gotta be going. But why? Well, it's cause, cause it's what I do. Any chance that you'll be back? Oh, shoot, I never thought I'd come back this time. I guess I better leave next time open. That would be lovely. Here's looking at you, kid. Oh, I'm no kid. Hey, I ain't Humphrey Bogart either. <laughs> Listen, sweetheart. Of all the gin joints, and all the towns, and all the world, I'm sure glad as hell I walked into yours. You got every right to bust my chops here. I admit it. I let an ex-con into the house with the kids. I lied about who he was. I let him toy with your emotions. Makes you feel any better. Just smack me. I'll hold still. What'd you do that for? I don't think I could explain that. If I live to be a hundred. I'd check the serial numbers on that cash if I were you. Well, now that you've passed the buck, so to speak, get ready for some major fun with Major Dad next. And Wednesday, get ready for the funniest working class hero since Archie Bunker. Get ready for Lenny. It's comedy's best season on CBS.